we want to build that next global Africa. It's yeah. not just, okay, learn about language and that's it, or learn about your history. That's part yeah. of your foundation. But your foundation also includes your presentation skills, things yeah. that you would need in order to function as a you yeah. know, forward-thinking member of society. Um, welcome to the Sound of Prayer podcast. I go by the name of Aiden Daniels. Uh, if this is your first time listening, um, this is the show where we speak with top gunning founders, entrepreneurs, and creators worldwide with the aim of leaving you behind with meaningful takeaways that you can apply in your life, business, and career. Just before we get into today's episode, I would like you to know that you can head over to the soundofacrow.com forward slash destination Africa for all of today's links, references, nuggets, and wisdom. So head over to the soundofacrow.com forward slash destination Africa. All right. It'll also be in the description below. Whether you're listening on the podcast platforms or on YouTube, please like, subscribe, share as you're well, whilst you're here. And if you listen to Spotify or Apple Podcasts or five star reviews, very much appreciated. So today I'm joined with one of the co-founders of Destination Africa, Michael Echo Richardson. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Hey, it's a pleasure. Pleasure have pleasure being here. Yeah, it's been great. I think over the past few weeks, you've developed a quick relationship and um, I feel like we connect because we have we share similar values and, of course, you're British uh, Ghanaian and I'm British Ghanaian. And yeah. I feel like, of course, once you have that connection, you can hit the ground running. Um, yeah, so again, um, so once again, Michael is one of the co-founders along with his partner, Abena. Um, they're the co-founders of Destination Africa. So it's an Afro parenting platform and they're involved in building the, the learners of tomorrow is that correct yes that's it that's yeah. it so. yeah so while we're on that topic could you just give us a quick elevator actually before we get into that um we actually met um through social media um you reached out nicely i appreciate that and then of course we we had like a, a you know a mean of me you abinar we had like a little brief meeting and then you came down to our 30th anniversary on monday yeah which i'm really grateful for so Thanks for coming down oh, to no, support us. It, 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 it was great, it. I'm sure. And, and three years in, and I'm sure yeah. many years to come. I appreciate it. I appreciate all my dad's I'm trying to learn the tree. Yeah. But we'll get into that because they have a tree program. So well, you're going to learn more about how you can get your hands in that and what to expect. Um, so, yeah. So we're going to get into um, Destination Africa. Could you just give the audience, Mike? I don't think everyone knows. I know quite a few people have heard about what you do. I've got friends that know about what you do, which is great. Um, would you just give them a quick 60, under 60 second elevator pitch in terms of what Destination Africa is and, and what you guys do? Okay, so Destination Africa is a platform which we've created to assist or build the learners of today mm -hmm. to become the leaders of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We found in our communities, especially the Afro community, that we sometimes haven't been intentional yeah. uh, on the certain areas about raising our children. Yeah. And we have to create platforms in order to leapfrog where we currently are to where we want our children to be. So Destination Africa is a platform mm -hmm. to encourage parents on their parenting journey mm -hmm. and also for children to instill some of the things which are essential to who they are in order for them to be and live out their potential. And that sounds powerful. It's like you've got that um, USB nail on the head. It's like I can tell you've been working on it, working it until you've got it razor sharp. Man. It's, so you know, it, it, it's, you. it's been a life journey. Mm -hmm. It's been a life journey and it's mm -hmm. one of those things when it's your passion, when you want to inspire, when you see some of the issues, yeah. I don't want to sit there and complain about it. As sometimes our parents did, just complained about the issues. We yeah. wanted to be part of the solution. So yeah, so yeah, it's something. Not a day goes by without <laughs> us thinking about it. So, yeah. yeah. Oh wow, well, that's 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 really amazing. I feel like you have this uh, burning desire and this passion to, you know, um, go on this mission of Afro parenting and parenting, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, on the topic of Afro parenting and parenting, could you just, before we get into like how it came into be, could you break down the difference of what Afro, some people probably don't know what Afro parenting is. For me, it's not really a term I'm familiar with. Yeah. Um, could you break down what Afro parenting is compared to normal parenting? I think I've got an idea, but I'd like yeah. to hear from you. Okay, so, you know, anyone, mm -hmm. whether you're white, Asian, South, South American, everyone has to go on that parenting journey. Mm -hmm. And there's certain things in that space which are universal. But then there are also things which are specific to those of an Afro orientation, <laughs> you know. So um, you can, I always say, you can go and pick up and read a blog yeah. uh, from any old parent. 
Yeah. Um, and sometimes it's good and it makes sense. But then there's certain things which are specific to where we came from, to mm. our situation. You know, we, we have that 100%. UK connection and yeah. certain things that happened in the UK, 100%. only the UK people would understand. 100%. The things that happened in the US, which US people understand, but there's something that both of us can connect with mm. on a black, on an Afro level. Yeah. And it's sometimes good to have those platforms to say, you know what, these are things specific to our culture. These are things the way we interact as family yeah. and you know having that space where it's geared towards that and to give people who aren't from that perspective an idea of some of the things that we get into so that that's that's what we coined the term afro parenting okay i understand that makes a lot of sense i, I think it's what i thought it would be mm -hmm. like it is it, 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 of course i thought it was going to be something that was only per, like personal to you know the afro or caribbean you know um society or community you understand yeah. again like the chinese have their own thing or the asians whatever they got their own thing exactly. the french have their own thing you understand so that makes that makes perfect sense um i mean what, what are some characteristics of her parents is like like maybe how like you do your hair and how you how you kind of like raise your kids how you handle your kids and misbehaving exactly of course our our culture is more kind of like um we're more kind of tied to maybe spanking our kids mm -hmm. rather than maybe maybe like a um What's the word I'm looking for? A Caucasian, uh, someone from a Caucasian background, yeah. probably not less likely to do that. Yeah. So I think it's probably stuff like Again, that. Yeah, you know, it's, it's the food, it's the culture, it's yeah, the some of the well. things which we sometimes take for granted. Yeah, it's some of the things that we should focus on. I remember when I was younger, I had a a good friend who was Portuguese, and mm. um, you know, his parents, for them, it wasn't a thing about teaching them Portuguese. Portuguese, you whether you could speak English, you would not have to speak Portuguese. Yeah. And that was their focus. Yeah. And that was where pride and culture came through. Yeah. Where from an Afro parenting perspective, there are many Africans or, or those from the African diaspora who don't see that as that important. Or it would be nice to have, but True. they don't deem it as essential. Yeah. They're more tied to the Portuguese culture. And I've seen that because yeah. I, I was there like, it's been like almost two weeks there in November and I saw that, like, yeah, because there's a lot of black people in Portugal, and of course they're from Africa, right? Yeah. But you don't really see them. I think maybe apart from what they wear, sometimes you don't really see them representing like Africa. Yeah. And they're all they're, they're very much Portuguese. They're embedded and tied to the culture. Mm -hmm. Whereas, whereas with us, we have dual identities. Yeah. We're British and then also Ghan uh, Ghanaian, understand? So we have the best of both worlds, and we know how to kind of like get the best out of both worlds. Yeah. 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 Exactly. It's a fantastic exactly. one. Um. So basically. Let's go into how Destination Africa came to be. So, of course, you said this kind of started off in the UK. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, you, you saw, like, challenges and problems and you felt like this would be, you know, a great way to kind of tackle that. Could you go more into that? Okay. So, I mean, it, it's, the journey is a very long one. I, I, I mean, don't know how far how, back I should go, but yeah, I'll start maybe just Maybe just Destination kind of, like, Africa. summarize it. Yeah. yeah so, <laughs> but for us, um, I mean, I met Abena in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. And one thing about her was, even though she lived most of her life in the UK, yeah. she always spoke to her mum in tree. So she, her tree was on point. Wow, I mean, it's better than yours. I mean, <laughs> fluently, yeah, yeah. serious. Like, and you wouldn't think that. When you talk to you, you wouldn't think that. But there's people, because I don't meet a lot of Ghanaians that are fluent in tree. It's yeah. hard for me. When I meet someone that's fluent in Ghanaian, I'm like, fluent in tree, so I get excited. Yeah, I, I, get excited. Excited. I'm, I got excited. Yeah. So <laughs> from there, I remember when we were speaking, I was like, you know what? it's important that we pass this on to the children because for me, I, I can see the void. Like, you know, around the time when I met Abna, yeah. I couldn't speak. I could speak Fanti a little bit. I knew house words. So if it came to like, you know, go and tidy your room, yeah. go and cook some rice, you know, sweep the floor. I, I can understand house words, but when it came to full conversation, proverbs, idioms, I was lost. So, um, yeah, we spoke about it and I said, you know, when the children are born, you need to make sure they can speak our language because because of that, I felt a bit of a cultural disconnect growing up. And I didn't want them to have that. I didn't want them to feel part British. Yeah. To, oh, well, part British, but not really British because, you know, you have a history, you have a, a culture and your parents came to the UK. And not to be on the other side where you go to Ghana and people say, oh, Bruni, or <laughs> you know, you're a foreigner. Yeah. And just be somewhere in the middle. I, I wanted them to feel like, you know, you are fully Ghanaian. And, and don't be confused about it. I love that. So yeah. when the children were born, we just said the first thing we were going to do was to make tree the language of the house. Yeah. So in order for that to happen, I knew I had to step up my tree game. 100%. So um, I was studying and really trying to 
to get it to that next level. Mm -hmm. So in the house, we'll sing nursery rhymes. Yeah. Um, we would, you know, read to him, tell him stories. There were some books we had in English. Yeah. And as we were reading the bedtime stories, we were translating in our heads in Chi yeah. so that he could understand, giving him actions and so yeah. on. You know, fast forward a few years, he, he, that they could speak Chi, they could read it, and they could write it. And people were like, well, how did you manage to do it living in the UK? And at that time, they'd never been to Ghana. Um, and I remember one time my mom took um, a sedan on a bus and one of the ladies heard him speak in Chi and she turned around and said, oh, when, when did he come from Ghana? <laughs> and my mom was like, he's never been to Ghana. And wow. the woman was so surprised. Wow. And through that, some of our friends were like, oh, you know, it would be great if you guys could help us, tell us, you know, how did you guys do it? So that's where Destination Africa started. Okay. It came up from a place where, you know, we wanted to share with the community and say, you know what, if you want to teach your children Chi, it's a great platform. And not only that, some of the other things we were incorporating to sort of build up his self-esteem, his identity, and who he was through learning African flags, through learning about culture, through storytelling, and through presentation skills, all these things, we brought it together, and then Destination Africa was born. That's powerful, man. That's powerful. So it just seems that just from the communities that you plugged into and the people that you surround them by, like, this just kind of like was birthed through like like natural demand and people seeing you and Abba are doing what you're doing on the day to day. Exactly, exactly. And and it, it really led to that sense of being really purposeful about what we do. And I always say to people, especially with, with children, you know, have a plan, have a plan. It sounds silly, but have a plan because what tends to happen is people have this mindset like, oh, okay, you know what? When my children get old enough, we'll go to Ghana, we'll go to Nigeria. They'll spend six weeks in the village, and then they're going to speak pure Yoruba, pure Chi, pure Inzima, and then come back and they're going to be fluent. And the reality <laughs> is, it doesn't work that way. Really? Yeah. It's your, what? So you can even have you can have a kid in the country and raise them there, and it wouldn't be fluent? Unless yeah. you speak it to them. Oh, so you're speaking yeah. it to I them. mean, it, it happens here, even yeah. in Ghana. Yeah. You get lots of families where they're so hell-bent on pushing them to speak English that they're forgetting to teach them their language of their, their mother tongue and children are being disconnected and uh, I'm saying there's nothing worse than living in Ghana someone comes from another country and they're teaching you your mother tongue that's crazy you know? oh man it's, it's, uh, to the space. It, it's not a place you it's, want to be in it's crazy there's this ongoing debate Michael about whether or not trees can be extinct in the, mm -hmm. in the newer generations what's yeah. your thoughts on that? My thoughts are, it's down to, it's down to us. It's down to us. I think um, if we sit there and do nothing, if we have a, um, an apathetic mindset about it, it will get extinct. Um, and then that would be no one's fault to blame but ourselves. And if it does, what else do we lose? Some people say it's just a language, you know? It doesn't matter. Other languages are, getting, uh, are dying out. But the question is, what are you losing with that language? Mm. What culture, what history, what heritage, what art, what law? You know, when you speak another language and someone translates it, sometimes you, you lose the meaning of True. it. True. Yeah. Um, and it's about, once you understand the full meaning of what the words are actually saying, yeah. it automatically gives you a different paradigm shift as to does, what is yeah. happening in this language. How do the people think? Um, so it would only be um, devastating. Yeah. You know, I, I say people come to Ghana, other than the party and at Christmas, yeah. for the culture, for the heritage, for the history of what happened. Mm -hmm. Now, if we're bending over backwards to not speak our language, to not show them our culture and our history, why would they come to Ghana? Yeah, that's actually, it's like you're it's losing your identity, you're losing It's a very good point. Are. We're just bringing the West here. Yeah. The West is already there. Why do you need to bring the West here? Yeah, exactly. That's another danger exactly. as well. So it, it's sad. I mean, it's great that God is on the map more, but yeah. it's sad that, you know, we're not really um, taking advantage of what Ghana is all about and our culture yeah. and stuff. I mean, there's a bits of it, but mm -hmm. shadows of it, I don't think it's enough. Exactly. I don't think we're doing enough. Yeah, yeah. You don't, I think you're doing enough. Okay. And um, I think for you, of course, you kind of worked on Destination Africa, you and Abana mm -hmm. um, from the UK. And then, of course, when did you move? When did you move to Ghana? So we moved to Ghana in 2019. 2019, okay, cool. That year, yeah, it was just a, it was just a pivotal year for a lot of people. Oh, man. It was a year a lot of people moved and a lot of things happened the year of return, of course. Yeah. Um, and then you guys wanted to kind of launch it within Ghana as well. Was that yeah. the plan or it just happened? So it was always a plan. Once, okay. once we decided we wanted to move a few years before, 
um, we were just putting things in place, planning, hope, you know, just strategizing. And then COVID and everything else happened and it yeah. happened quicker than, yeah. to a certain extent, than, than we planned for. But sometimes you have to roll with the punches. Yeah. Um, so since we've been in Ghana, we've, mm -hmm. we've had uh, multiple terms, multiple classes. Yeah. Uh, we, we ran classes at the Lagoon Botanical Gardens. Love we've, done, we've done some online. So, you know, we had the UK Destination Africa family joining mm -hmm. online, learning to cook jollof. <laughs> um, I love that know, one. Chiche Kule. It was, yeah. it's been a lot of fun. So we, so far we saw, we're merging the face-to-face -face classes with the online ones. Yeah. And now we get to that place where we're about to release our academy shortly. Yeah. We'll get back to that. Um, we'll definitely talk about that. Why Destination Africa if there's a lot of um, focus around Ghana? So Destination Africa is, I will say it's part of who you are. It starts from where you are. So mm -hmm. in, in the UK, one of the first things we did was to teach tree because that was a language we knew. Mm -hmm. um, but even though we were in the UK, it wasn't solely a focus on Ghana. It was a focus on Africa, or we would have called it Destination Ghana. Mm -hmm. um, so when people came, it wasn't just Ghanaians. Okay. Oh, yeah, had non Ghanaians coming as well. Yes, we had mm -hmm. Nigerians, we had Tanzanians, we had South Africans, we had those from the Caribbean, we yeah. had mixed heritage um, families, because we even had Turkish and Canadians. Whoa. Come. And, and well, the whole, what did that? What did that? and Turkish, um, Turkish, and we, we had one um, purely Turkish family. Who no, came, purely Turkish. And you know what? The, the son was five years old at the time, and um, we asked him like, "Why did you come to these classes?" And he was like, "Oh, you know, in future, his son saying that he wants to do business in Africa, so he wants to learn an African language." Did that give you a light bulb moment when you heard that? You know what? I mean, for me. The light bulb moment went on a few years ago. <laughs> but this gave me a secondary light bulb <laughs> and just made me realize that, look, when someone who isn't from the African continent saw some classes about culture and language That's and stuff insane. and just decided that he's, he's going to do it. He, he, he's... And, and that's the intentionality I'm talking about. Okay, cool. Because he's got kids as well. Yeah. So he, he had a five-year-old at the time and okay, a cool. three-year-old who came. That's actually a good point. So it's not only for necessarily Ghanaians or Africans, it's for non-Africans who want to relocate or invest or live in Africa. Invest, yeah. And, and yeah. I, I would say it's investing in your children. Children. So we, we had another family where um, mixed-race child, mm -hmm. um, British or English heritage, yeah. and the, parent, the, the father was, was Nigerian. Mm. But he didn't want to teach the children about their culture. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to teach them about their language. So she, she saw this thing, she found, found us, signed up, joined it, and said, absolutely loved it. And she said she wants her child, who's of mixed heritage, to know equally about both sides of the family. And that's the that's that intentionality I'm talking about. That's that for someone on the other side to, to do their job and more you know, it should really be the parent from that side to, to say, you know, this is important to me. I need to do it um, for my child so that they know both sides of their identity. Ooh, I love that. Which doesn't happen very often. And something I've realized in patterns yeah. is wherever there's normally, and I, I, I might get shot down for this, <laughs> but wherever there's a, say an African parent yeah. and another, uh, a parent from another group, whether it's yeah. European, whether it's South American, whether it's Asian, yeah. The parent that is non-African is, is more like the, the dynamic of dominance is with, with the non-African. True. So if there's French and yeah. African, yeah. they're more likely to know the French than they are to know the African language. It's if true. they are Asian, if yeah. they are uh, Malay yeah. and any African country, yeah. they're going to know Malaysian. If they're Spanish, Spanish will be the first language. Every now and then mm -hmm. it's the other way around, but in the majority, and that's because our intentionality to teach our children our culture and, our, and their identity. Hey guys, this is Adrian from the Sound of Crown Podcast. I hope you're enjoying this episode. It's just a quick announcement. Now, have you guys been thinking about starting a podcast? I know everyone is starting a, a new podcast these days, but there's a very, very good reason why everyone is starting their podcast. Now, if you're thinking of starting, launching, growing, and monetizing your podcast, I'm here to let you know that I am now helping hundreds of podcasters around the world to do just that. And I've been doing just that for many years now. So if you're interested in learning how to start, launch and grow your own podcast and get a piece of the pie of the podcasting world and to be able to launch your own authority, launch your own brand, monetize, create a business and so on and so forth, please do get in touch.
head over to a to z podcasting.com and learn more about how we can support you and your podcasting goals isn't there and then this is where this nation african comes in really exactly. to really push push that envelope and to really kind of balance out exactly that, um you know that area this is very very powerful very 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 powerful honestly like i never thought about it that way like when you just told me that like, even non africans trying to you know come into you to, your, to get involved with your platform so they can pass these values onto their kids and yeah. you know and to learn a bit more you know about africa and you know how to kind of like integrate their family into the country into exactly. the continent yeah. i think it's really powerful stuff so of course so now so so of course you move to ghana destination africa is you know it's running in ghana you even have people joining from zoom and everything so you also noticed that there was like gaps in the market or maybe like there wasn't really a lot of what you guys are doing in ghana and people needed what you were doing even in ghana yes yeah, yeah. so um the, the thing is sometimes in the west there's that appreciation for you know for culture yeah. for identity yeah. people are you know, I remember when the Afro beats started coming, mm -hmm. that's a time when people were proud to, to wear their batakeris or their um, Sankara or different things. But in Ghana, it's almost like, oh, you know what? There's almost nothing to be proud of. They're, they're waiting for the diasporans to show the pride. And from there, mm -hmm. now they're taking more pride in it. But mm -hmm. at the same time, there are certain things because they want to almost be westernized. They want to fit in. They want to be accepted, they are suppressing their culture. Yeah. And you are finding a generation of children who don't know much about their culture, mm. who don't know much about their history, historical figures. Yeah. Um, so it's true, because in Ghana, usually they want to be more like the West Americans yes. and whatever. They don't mm. really want to, they, some, some of them are disgusted, some of them are disgusted about their own culture. Yeah. But it's like, I think they're blinded because it's the funny thing is that we tell them we want to be like you like you and you want yeah. to be like us yeah it's funny it. the grass, the grass always seems to be greener i know i'm sorry that, yeah. <laughs> i know so. yeah so it's quite interesting so i think having those perceptions i mean Ghanaians having the perceptions mm -hmm. i think it, it, it is great that you know platforms like yourself can make them realize no like they have to and this is really really important yeah and then see the beauty in it as well i think yeah. it's important as well i mean it's amazing because the thing is i always say we always say in order to be bold, like true confidence is had from knowing who you are, you know, knowing thyself. And if you don't know yourself, you'll always be wavering. You'll always be wavering. You know, you can learn someone else's culture as much as you like, but it's always their culture, it's someone else's culture. But know yourself, whatever it may be, be proud of who you are, where you came from, you know, who your family is, the journey that they've made. And from that, if you merge that with whatever you learn, the, the knowledge, the wisdom on top from anywhere around the world, you are in a, in a sure place to, to do great things. And sometimes we, we want to skip that part and jump straight to the academics, jump <laughs> to things which, um, which are good yeah. and which we must always do and um, endeavor, but not at the um, sacrifice of knowing who we are and embedding that foundation. I think that's the foundation that's important. Mm. You, need, you need to build that foundation and then you can get to the stuff like speaking the language and then the other bits. I think yeah. it's really, really important what, what you were saying. And I mean, you mentioned, you know, um, like, you know, Turkish people getting involved in Destination Africa and you know, all these incredible stories. Like, are there any, any kind of like notable like testimonies or kind of like stories from customers or, or maybe? community members of Destination Africa yeah. that you like to share? Is any notable? Oh, I mean, there are so many. So on one of our programs, um, on an online one during the COVID, we had a special jell-off jell special. <laughs> so part of that term was about entrepreneurship. So mm -hmm. we were teaching the children about how to become an entrepreneur, um, how to set up your own businesses. They learned about charities and different things. So mm -hmm. during that term, one of the things was to have your own business. So the week before they created a little skit on selling their Jalof company, which they all did, sent in their videos. <laughs> and this week was the time for them to make- Oh, so this is for products. kids? It's kids for so, kids? Yeah, so, wow. so the program online is primarily for, for children. It's like yeah. an empowerment program, but yeah. because of the Zoom, the children, the parents are also present. Okay, So sense. one of the things we tend to do is try to do programs in conjunction with parents. We makes don't want to be like, oh, pay, and leave your children. We want no, no, no. To it doesn't see. work like that. Exactly. It's usually with, with, with the kid comes the parent. You, you, you don't get one 
you, have, you, don't, you can't buy separately, you get them as a package. Too, as a package. Exactly. <laughs> so on this occasion, we were doing um, jollof rice. And sometimes for many children, it was the first time they'd cooked with their parents. Wow. Online. And you this know, is serious stuff, you know. We, we made Honestly. the food. They, they, were, I I had this, they, were, they were on the fire, cooking, chopping up the onions. On Zoom. This is on Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> and literally, wow. there was like 15 <laughs> families on Zoom. And at the end of it, you know, after they tasted their food, they had to do a video testimonial. <laughs> and <laughs> one of the things that really touched me was one of the boys said, you know, it's the first time ever made jollof rice no and it's the first time i'd cooked with my parents and it, and now that, that was the whole point of it. it was to one learn about creating food having fun in the kitchen but really to start building those memories with your parents doing things which are culturally should be innate so um, so yeah that, that was one of the ones that really touched me i think on another term we had the end of term and one of the boys said you know one of the things he really loved was learning to speak um, his, his mother tongue. And again, it was something which I thought he would enjoy the games, playing with his brothers and sisters, the competition, but it was just feeling like he can now identify with his mother tongue. That was, that was really powerful. That's powerful. And you would think with the kids, they're more you know, um, inclined to the, the fun stuff, but mm -hmm. they've probably picked up the significance. Exactly. And exactly. the power in speaking the language, being able to cook the food. Yeah, being able to understand the culture and the history. Yeah, yeah, you're doing a fantastic job. Oh, thank you. Please thank keep you. going. I uh, share the same things with you know with, with, with guests, other guests during season five, and you know, uh, yeah, people are really making impact. You know, filling in gaps that are needed to be filled. So exactly. I mean, exactly. I want to congratulate you and Avon for the good work that you're oh, doing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so I mean, okay, we've, I think we've spoken about all these different. Like programs that you do in Zoom, and then you mentioned that Brie Botanical Gardens. You know, so of course you do in-person events and programs mm -hmm. and workshops, etc. Um, and then of course you like courses as well. So we're going to get into that. So, um, like what? How, of course, this Nation Africa is a community, is a platform, but I mean, of course, there's a there's business model behind it on the back of it. Like, what does that look like? Okay, so um, for us, the the model is to is to what well, the vision primarily is to be intentional about our parenting to ensure that you know, no Afro child out there grows up to their 20s or 30s not being able to speak an African language, yeah. not knowing about their culture, okay. not learning some of these foundational things yeah. that make them who they are, um, as well as other skills on top. And we want to get that message out to as many people as possible and to give them the resources and the opportunity to say, you know what, it's available. Um, and this is where sort of the next step of what Destination Africa doing comes into play with our academy. Okay, okay, I get that. And um, Destination Africa, I know it's aimed at Afro parents. Um, is it also suitable for like individuals? And yeah, so I mean, primarily we say it's it's for everybody. Mm. Um, but we we mention Afro parenting, so you know the perspective on which it's coming from. Mm. Um, most of the content is geared towards the African continent. You know, if we tell stories, it's going to be primarily from the African continent somewhere. Um, if it's languages, it's going to be the, the focus will be primarily on an African language or multiple Af African languages from a co from across the continent. Mm. If you're Pakistani or um, from Japan. You can you can join in. You can sign up, and you can learn more about the African continent. So it, 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 it's for it's for everyone. <laughs> Pakistani, I love that. I'm sure you probably have Pakistanis from there as well. Yeah, we, we do. We do. <laughs> okay, and let's talk about this new academy. Is it out? Or is it coming up? Is it coming up for 2023? Or yes, it's coming up for. So we, we'll be launching it on the 15th of February mm -hmm. um, next month. Mm -hmm. um, so that is our on demand courses just to allow people from across the world okay. at any time to, to to sign up and also to have that interaction you know to okay. have the benefit we we didn't want to launch it sometimes we should have launched it a while ago i was like no you know we want to get it right we want to make sure there's that right level of interaction versus video and so on so we've yeah. had a small pilot group testing it in the background and making sure it was effective, you know, that it worked, scratched it, did it again. <laughs> um, but now it's ready to go. It's ready to go. And yeah. We're, yeah, we're happy it's going to have the impact that we, we, we desire. That's powerful yeah. and um, that's amazing. How long, has it been, how, long in the, how long has it been in the works for? Um, it's probably since 
2019, mm. 2020. Okay, so it's been a few years. So yeah. is it something you started working on, you know, years ago or is it something you started working on years ago or is literally just like, okay, cool, we have all of this content, let's just pull it together into an academy or you actually just intentionally said, oh, we're going to start building this thing? It, it, it's inten- it was intentional. So okay. we, when we left the UK, we had a Destination Africa family mm. um, in the UK. And it was like, oh, when are you guys going to do stuff online? When are you going to do stuff online? And we were like, no, we'll do it. Once we get settled, yeah. we, we'll do it. Yeah. And we started and okay. it was going well. Okay. Um, but as you do, there's a different dynamic between face-to-face okay. and doing it online. Mm-hmm. And we didn't want to rush something and just get it online. And it wasn't as impactful okay. as the face-to-face mm-hmm. content. So that's why we took time, really dissected a program, built it back up primarily for those on the other side of the screen so that it can be as effective. Okay. And with all the necessary support resources and so on. All so. right, cool. So, what does it look like? So, what's what can people expect in the academy? Is it like a subscription? Is it a one-off price? Is it a yearly price? Like, what's what's the pricing like? Okay, so it would be a, a yearly subscription, yearly subscription yeah. originally, and and what that would contain is different modules within. So, okay. there'll be modules on language. There'll be modules on on um, on the country information. There'll be modules on different elements from presentation mm-hmm. skills to entrepreneurship, Mm -hmm. to financial literacy, to um, there's a module on (laughs) self-defense, there's a module on Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. I think I I saw some content on YouTube, it's crazy, I love that. Bitcoin, oh my gosh. Oh, crypto. (laughs) The the whole aim is we want to build that next global Africa. It's not just, okay, learn about language and that's it, or learn about your history. That's part of your foundation, but your foundation also in includes your presentation skills, things yeah. that you would need in order to function as a you yeah. know, forward-thinking member of society. That's so, fantastic. So, uh, and, and we focus on the areas where most places don't focus in school. So yeah. all these courses or, or short courses are there and also partly there for parents to interact with their parents, have that conversation, enjoy and build memories yeah. whilst building your children. You know what, this is, this is great, Michael, because, you know, I mean, someone like me, I might think, oh, this is just something maybe quite, trad- this, this is something where it's a place where I can go and learn traditional, you know, skills, right? Yeah. Which are essential, right? Mm-hmm. It's still relevant today. Yeah. But you've also included like contemporary skills yeah. and, you know, resources and uh, tools needed to, to, to succeed and navigate society today. Like you mentioned yeah. Bitcoin and all this other stuff. Like, yeah. It's really, really great. Yeah. It's a really forward thinking. Oh, well, I mean, right? the, the, it's, that's what it's all about. You know, sometimes, as that saying, sound off Sometimes you have to go back to take it before you, you move forward. That's so we, we, we don't want to forget to go back and we just don't want to go forward blind. We want to yeah. combine the two and, and bring the best of both worlds. That, that's, that's incredible. So I'm sure you've got quite a few people on the waiting list ready, yes. to, ready yeah. to jump so, on it. So, so, so we, we, yeah, so as you said earlier, we're, we're launching on the 15th. Um, we're doing a, a live uh, webinar, so we'll be demonstrating some of it. We have nice. a few people lined up. And nice. just before we go on a little online virtual tour, so we I have a that. few guests I love that, yeah. coming in to share their journey, um, as well as preparing for the launch. So That's it'll be it, interesting. I'll, I'll send you the link no problem. Um, so that people can join in and, and yeah. find out more about Destination Africa. Absolutely. We'll put in the, I mean, but probably by the time the audience or the our listeners um, listen to this episode or watch this episode, um, it's probably going to be already out. But um, yeah, we'll have all the links to the academy, and if there's any like pre-recorded videos, we'll have those links in there as well. I'm sure Mike would be happy to share that oh, with you as well. And um, of course, um, on the you mentioned San Kung Fa, I'm just gonna double tap on that. Um, so you also have like a tree program, tree program or language. Yeah, so so well. for us, language is is all encompassing. It's all part yeah. of it. It's like you, you you can't be an African without an, an, of course, an African yeah. language. So okay. again, that part of that was my personal journey and some of the tools we have. Are there to help people navigate that as well and to learn trees. So, yeah, um, yeah we, we, that's part of the package. We'll have to have a conversation about that because my tree is not up to scratch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, it, it's one of the challenges. I think when people come to Ghana, it's it, it's interesting. I tend to find the cultural aspect. People don't place much a lot of emphasis on it in terms of one of the essential things. They're like, oh, get somewhere to live, sort out my job, get a car, yeah. and whatever but they miss the language. They neglect those and, things. And I always say, once you have the language, you, you open a door, it's almost like a parallel universe, mm. which is close to you. 100%. And, yeah, and, and, and that's the one thing, if I was to say to anyone, like, you know, 
get that focus on it, get a language, pick it up. Because for me, speaking for myself, as I said earlier, I started to learn Pree when I was 30 years old. And my family knew that I knew one or two words before, so every time I come back on holiday, they'd be like, oh, hello, my God. But it was very much a sense of, okay, that's Michael, but you know, he's over there. But the moment I learned to speak Chi, and then they heard, they're like, hey, Michael, hey, Oti Chiyo, Oti Chiyo, <laughs> which is like, you can speak Chi. Yeah. And, and they see you differently. They warm to me in a different way. Yeah. Like now I was a family man, <laughs> you know, not that sort of monk, Michael yeah. who lives in London. Yeah. And it, it changes doors, it, it, it opens things up. I mean, sometimes yeah. you, you go and buy a mango and somebody will yeah. give you another one. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. You know, because they're your, they see, they see you as your, as their own. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and like, if you really want to, yeah. want your children, even yourself, to feel like Africa yeah. is my home, you, you've already got the passport, you got the skin. Hundred percent, man. Now it's you know, get the language, understand. Hundred percent, and I think it's it's a universal principle. I think if you can speak the same language as that person from mm -hmm. that country that you like that you come come across, yeah. Um, they connect with you more yeah. than they will if you're speaking just English with them. Exactly. Um, I was in Scotland last year in summer, August mm -hmm. 2022, and um, I was with a group of friends. We went on a vacation, and um, my friend hit this person's car. Mm -hmm. um, not knowing my friend's Ghanaian, yeah. she's British Ghanaian, but she's Dutch as well. Mm -hmm. She's fluent in Dutch because she grew up in the Netherlands. That guy that she hit was Dutch because she saw the the registration plate. Mm -hmm. Um, she started speaking English, but then when she realized she was Dutch, they started speaking Dutch, and mm -hmm. he kind of like warmed it's up to her in a different way. Yeah. Understand? So it was a different kind of like connection, connection there, and yeah. he was a lot more at ease. Understand? Mm -hmm. There's something powerful about language. Yeah. Obviously, there's something is. And speaking of languages, I mean, your I know your kids are quite fluent in Tree. Mm -hmm. Do they want to come in? Yeah. Yeah. I said that. You want to come in and say some words in Tree? Just come into the yeah. shop. Just just be careful as you're walking in. Just, just, just walk carefully around the, um, yeah. So Asad is coming into the shop. <laughs> just come say hello. You can go, 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 come, come by your dad and just say hello. Just, just, just say, just, 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 just tell them about yourself and tree. All right, so, hello everyone. My name is Asad. Oh, should I try to give him the mic? No, it's fine. It's oh, fine. No, he, it's fine. He, he should be able to pick it up. Okay, should yeah, be able to pick it up. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Hello everyone. So my name is Asad Richardson, as Uncle just introduced of the show. So as you know, my father's been talking about their company, Destination Africa, and gave you a little bit of a backstory on how I can keep you. So, uh, you have any questions to ask me? To no, just, I, I, no, what I'll say, what, yeah, just, just kind of maybe like, it's just, just, just say, just greet basically the audience in tree. Hi, my name is Asada. I'm this age and I, I enjoy this sport um, and I like to do these things in my free time, whatever. Hey. <laughs> Oh, my dad say, why are they about? Yeah, why are they? Yeah. Well, say, Mom. Yeah. Great job, great job. Thank, thank you for coming in. Thank you for coming in. That's it. Um, so, any any other plans for 2023 apart from the, the platform? Oh, the, the platform is going to be big. So that, that's yeah. the main focus for 2020. That's going to take so, up the bulk of your time yeah. as it is. Yeah. I'm yeah. sure it There's is. Yeah. Constantly new content and different things coming. Yeah. Um, we really want to immerse those around the world mm. in African culture, in Ghanaian culture, and just you know build themselves and give themselves a platform so that they too can expand and teach their children specifics about their, their heritage and stuff. So my thing is invest, invest, invest in your children. That's powerful.
that's powerful. And any tips to um, aspiring or existing parents uh, who are Afro-parenting? Um, I'll say just join a platform, join a network, join a space of other parents who really want to push and are using different um, innovative ways to teach and, and to grow their community. Because there's that saying, it takes a village to raise a child. Mm. And, you know, it takes an e-village to raise a child. So, <laughs> so, you know, get connected with different people around, but ultimately be intentional. Be intentional about, about your parenting, you know. See that value. I always have, say, have the end in mind. Um, you know, where do you want your children to be? When they're 19, 20 years old, where do you want them to be? And, and start with their mind. I, I know many parents who invest in property. You know, they invest in, spend a lot of time in academics and their professions. Yeah. But at the same time, they sacrifice preparing their children oh, to continue time time or to leapfrog. So yeah. start with the end of mind and invest in them from the early ages. Because yeah. sometimes, you know, they get to seven, eight years old and they're like, I don't want to go to Africa. And they say certain things and you're like, those are the, they, they should be making your ears burn. 100%. Because because you, that seed has already been sown, and you lost them already. Yes. Then, when they start saying that, exactly. And if you so, look at Asad and his brother. I mean, yeah. they're already, you know, in, you know, entwined in culture. And yeah. Speaking their language is fantastic. Exactly. So, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Michael, I really enjoyed this conversation. Um, Likewise. Apart from your academy, any other announcements you want to make? I thought no. That's, that's the academy for us. That's yeah. it. No. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. Well, um, where can everyone find you? Destination Africa. Yes, so Destination Africa, you can find us at our website at www.thedestinationafrica.com. I'm on Instagram. We're on Instagram at Dest, D E S T, Africa, mm -hmm. G R P. Okay. And the same on Facebook and all the other social okay. media. Had someone taken Destination Africa already, the, the handle, or maybe, maybe it was too long? Or... Um, yeah, it was too, it was too long. So <laughs> when we got it, that, that was the one that worked across all platforms. Gotcha, yeah. I mean, I have that conversation. With people sometimes yeah yeah michael thank you so much for coming on the show I really thank appreciate you for it. having us yeah so there you have it guys um michael echo richardson um he's the co-founder of uh, destination africa um once again all the show notes the links references nuggets and gems will be in the show notes so you head over to the sound of crowd.com forward slash destination africa that's the sound of crowd.com forward slash destination africa um if you're watching YouTube, please like, subscribe on your way out, share with a friend or family, and if you're listening to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, five-star reviews, very much appreciated. And I will catch you in the next episode. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Take care. Hey guys, this is Age from the Sound of Crow podcast. I hope you guys enjoy this episode. It's just a quick announcement. Now, those of you who may have been watching or following the podcast for quite some time now, I would like to hear from you. What do you think of our podcast? What topics do you want to hear from us more? What guests do you want to see? What kind of uh, episodes would you like to see or hear? Please let us know. Um, drop an email to info at thesoundofcrowd.com or fill out a short form in the description below and me and the team will get in touch with you. Also, if you would like to sponsor future seasons, please do get in touch. Um, info at thesoundofcrowd.com or we'll drop a form in the description below and we will be able to share some information and our decks in terms of how you can get involved in sponsoring a season. And finally, we're working on a paid private community where like-minded Ghanaian creators, entrepreneurs, and even others from the greater African diaspora can come together and up-level themselves as an entrepreneur, as a creative, as a creator, or as an authority in the industry, learning how they can you know, do better in their fields. Drop us an email, info at the sound of a or fill out the short form below and you'll get more information about that coming soon in 2023. Thank you for watching. See ya.